Hello and welcome back to another Rome Remastered Historical Battle walkthrough. Today is the second video where we are going over the Alexander Expansion. In today's video we are doing the second historical battle, which is the Battle of Granicus. Having crushed Greek resistance at Chironia, Philip installed himself as the head of the League of Corinth. This gave him control over all the armies of Greece, and he immediately set about his long-avowed desire to reclaim the Persian-ruled Greek cities in Asia Minor. In 337 BC, Philip sent an advanced invasion force under his most experienced general, Parmenian, across the Hellespont to establish a foothold in Asia Minor. But in 336 BC, Philip was suddenly assassinated and his young son Alexander had to move quickly to establish himself as undisputed king. Alexander immediately had all suspects executed and then marched to Greece where he summoned a meeting of the League of Corinth and forced the city-states to confirm him as rightful heir to Philip. He then quelled minor uprisings in Sparta and Athens before turning north to quash the unruly barbarian tribes. And when the city of Thebes rebelled, it soon learned what would become of those who dared defy Alexander. He razed the city to the ground and enslaved the entire population. For the time being, Greece was pacified and Alexander turned his attention to the east and the Persian Empire. The advance force under Parmenian had been held up by the Greek mercenary leader Memnon, who was fighting for the Persians. When Alexander arrived with an army of 40,000 men, he immediately confronted Memnon at the Granicus River. Alright, so that's the historical context, and now I'm going to mute that and we'll talk about the units that we have. So as you can see, what we have in this battle is we have multiple uh, phalanx units, then we have a few skirmisher units, and a total of three cavalry units. Now those cavalry units will play a key role in this battle to flank around the enemy and hit them hard, including killing the enemy general. Uh, now the Persian forces are quite strong, mostly made up of cavalry. Now this cavalry will be a threat to our phalanx units, because as you can see these are uh, ranged cavalry units, which will be a serious threat that our phalanx units will not be able to deal with properly, so we will need to use our cavalry to quickly take that out, and finally leave our phalanx to finish off the Greek mercenary units. So let's begin. It is late in the day as a Macedonian army approaches the river Granicus. Scouts have reported a large concentration of Persian troops on the far bank. Horse archers from Scythia and heavy cavalry from Hycania and Bactria together with mounted axemen from Barcania. Memnon of Rhodes, a mercenary officer, commands them. He has chosen the battle site well. The Granicus is in full flow and its steep, slippery banks present a formidable obstacle. The Persians seem confident that Alexander will not try an attack so late in the day. But the young Macedonian king has faith in the readiness of his battle-hardened troops for such a challenge. His phalangists provide a stable, if slow-moving platform their soft flanks guarded by the more mobile hypaspists. With the excellent Thessalian cavalry and his own famed companions, Alexander has meant to deal the Persians a heavy blow. His 
destiny balanced on a sword's edge, Alexander prepares to sound the advance. Alright, so in this battle, the key to victory is speed and ability to quickly rush through and take advantage of the situation provided. Now, what we see here is that the Persians have made a tactical mistake. What they did is they set up a very small uh, cavalry force to try and hold us off at the river. This is because they were not expecting Alexander to push through so early, because even his own uh, men recommended to wait until the next day and attack in the early morning. But he said no. He planned to immediately take advantage of the tactical mistake made by the Persians and charge through. Because as the narrator said, he believed that his men were ready for such a challenge. So what we're going to do is we're going to slowly advance with our infantry forces up towards the river bank. And then we're going to use, while the main force of the Persians, which you can see, very small cavalry force on the river bank, a slightly larger cavalry force, uh, really close by and then the main Greek force which could be the most devastating if used properly uh, is the farthest back so we're gonna have to quickly charge through and that's what we're gonna do Going to speed up the time a bit. Alright, now we're going to... So, as you can see, we have three cavalry units. We have our General Alexander, then we have the Thessalian cavalry, which is heavy cavalry, and then we have our light cavalry unit, which will be the one that we have to be kind of careful about so they don't get killed. So I'm going to... Send all three cavalry units at once to back up Alexander. Now we have to do this quickly because as you can see the enemy has skirmisher units which will be very damaging to us if we can't break through quickly. So we need to get through this as quickly as possible and before the enemy can reinforce this flank, as you can see they're already sending cavalry. So as soon as they start routing, we have to immediately get away. Alright, now what we're going to do is we're going to start flanking around the enemy forces. I could be chasing them down, but I'm not going to. We'll just deal with them as they come back, if they come back. Because we need to push for the advantage while we have it. As you can see, Memnon is, himself is charging towards us, which is exactly what we want. So I'm going to move our units around to just try and lure him into a trap. I don't want them striking our light cavalry it would be devastating so I'm going to charge in with Alexander and then once they get engaged and stopped hopefully there we go once they get engaged and stopped we're going to charge back in with our light cavalry and fully encircle them and there we go Memnon is dead meaning that the enemy forces will start to rout much faster I'll leave my light cavalry chasing them a little while uh, now what we're going to do is we're going to take out those Peltists, because they can be very dangerous. I think that's enough chasing them. We could kill more of them, but we're not going to. I'm going to try and conserve some energy while killing a lot of the enemy forces. So basically what we're doing now is we're just trying to 
uh, find the perfect moment to strike. As you can see, the enemy is set up to try and continue holding the riverbank. What we're going to do is we're just going to continue skirmishing along or striking them when they least expect it with our cavalry. So as you can see when we... the Bactrian cavalry is a heavy cavalry that we have to be really careful about. So what I'm going to try and do is as soon as they separate from the main force so that they can't be reinforced easily, I'm going to try and take them out. No, I'm not too worried because we still have 53 minutes left, so... I'm going to play this nice and slow. Uh, and as we can see, that unit came back, so we're just gonna scare them away again. And as soon as we get a nice separation from the main force, we'll strike. But as you can see, that doesn't seem to want to happen, so we're gonna have to take this matter into our own hands. Oh, maybe it will. We're going to use a lot of our units to try and target the heavy cavalry because it is the biggest threat and our light cavalry should be able to handle taking out these ranged units. Although I am a bit worried. There we go. Very good. Just want to continue chasing them because these guys will come back and they could do a serious blow to us if we let them come back. So I want to continue chasing them, but as you can see, they're going to run across the riverbank, which is not ideal. But we'll deal with it when it comes. Just want to take some of them out. Alright, next what we're going to do is we're actually going to... Uh, target the rest of the cavalry forces. Once all the cavalry forces are taken out, we'll try and draw the enemy Greek mercenaries away from the riverbank to allow us to uh, move our own infantry forces across. Want to be careful because if these guys come back as they're doing, this could be very deadly. I'd prefer to conserve ammunition, but there's nothing we can really do right here. Just let them come. Actually, hold here so we don't get stuck. There we go. Alright, conserve ammunition. I'm actually going to turn off... The I want to turn off so they don't fire at will. Alright, enough focusing on those routing units, it is time to strike the rest of the enemy force. So what we're going to do is we're going to start running right away because cavalry is most dangerous when it is at a running start, able to charge into the enemy position. And there we go, a devastating strike, as you can see, it killed almost half of the enemy unit. So as soon as they route, we're going to start going after the next one, and the next one, and just continuing to route them. Although it would be, once again, I'm going to repeat this, because it would be ideal to continue chasing them. We will not do so, for the most part, because we need to continue striking them. As you can see, once the rest of that cavalry force is taken out, we will chase them around a bit, because... There's nothing they can do to really stop us with no more cavalry. And now all that's left is to take out the Greek uh, mercenary units. So what I want to do is I'm going to try and move my troops really close to them. And the point of this is to try, kind of draw attention so that they move out of formation.
Trying to be cautious about that unit, they could come back and really hit us hard. Oh, and they came back. Well, since they're just missile cavalry, they'll die very quickly, so one-on-one -on -one we should be able to handle it. But I don't really want to send Alexander after them because he's a heavy cavalry unit, which could be very powerful in ruining the day of these Greek mercenaries. But I don't want to keep you waiting here too long to see how this battle turns out, so I'm just going to leave them alone and continue fighting. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to have all my skirmish units open fire onto them. This is just to kind of bother them and try and really make them want to leave formation. And get a few more kills, weakening the units, making it easier for us later on in the battle. Move out of the way slightly. don't seem very willing to cross. So there's only one thing left that we can do. It's going to be a direct cavalry charge right into the back. Don't want them to get too close. And I don't want to get hit in the back myself. still going. There we go. Don't go that close, please. Please don't go that close. Alright, I'll just have my light cavalry chase them down. Enough is enough. should never charge your cavalry into spearmen or these kinds of units, but we have no other choice. And as you can see, a heavy cavalry charge in the back will be very powerful, strong enough to even rout them, which was quite surprising. I don't know why these units are still firing when I told them to stop. So now we've basically opened it up, what we're going to do is uh, strike the final unit here, and then we're going to start rushing our troops across to try and accomplish something. I would like to move my phalanx units across, but I see that this might be... No, we have the perfect time. All right, let's go. We need to go now. We need to just run. We'll try and draw their attention away from the riverbank to allow our units more space to cross. How are you doing? You're routing them. Okay, good. We could just... Ooh, they came back. Just run. Alright, we gotta do something. This is not a good position to be in. Uh, we could take serious casualties if we don't break this apart. There we go. Okay. Just continue running. I'm 
Sorry if I'm not commentating a lot about what's happening. I'm just trying to focus on basic movement of troops. All right, now that we're up here, this will provide us a great advantage because we we will finally have the high ground and we'll be having an easier time dealing with these pesky mercenaries who have betrayed Greece. Going to try and rush our skirmisher units across as well. The purpose of that, well, that's basically just to hit these guys in the back while they're busy engaging our main force. Yeah, you guys can come back. I'll tell them to walk. There's no real need for them again. We've basically won at this point. We'll take them out. There we go. Oh no! Don't engage them in hand to hand combat. So basically what we're doing is we're just waiting for the perfect opportunity to hit them with our phalanx units. And then once they are engaged with our phalanx units, we're just going to use our cavalry and hit them in the side. To fully rout them. And as you can see, this is quite effective. Uh, so far they've only killed 3% of our army, which is very, very good. Uh, now, no matter what difficulty you're doing this battle on, the same strategy applies. You just want to use your cavalry to quickly break through, surround them, and take out their cavalry, and then finish off their mercenaries. I do these battles on the easy difficulty just to provide the basic strategic... Uh, concept and what you should be doing, but the same battle plan follows for any difficulty, whether you're doing it on easy or very hard. So I'm going to end the battle and see the results. Well, that's very good. We have made the Greek traitors pay. We have broken through and had our first taste of victory against the Persians, and we only lost 41 men in the process. Well, I think that's a pretty successful battle. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed watching this and found this video useful in beating this battle yourself or battles similar to this. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you watching again next time. Have a good day.